Hey team, I wanna have, go ahead and start this video out with a really big shout out to Jonathan. He's been doing a great job uh, communicating, putting out a lot of great information um, on his own and facilitating all of the information that Amy and I wanna go ahead and get out to you guys as the competitive team. So John, thank you so much for facilitating um, a lot of that communication of the framework that Amy and I are working on to go ahead and support you guys as the team and with the additional add-ons that you have added as well on there, John. A big appreciation, everybody, a big hand. Um, with that, guys, there's another point that I've been wanting to go ahead and table and set expectations for for a little while now. And there was a small blow up by me yesterday. For those of you that were there, you know what it was about, so on and so forth. And it just kind of instilled the need for me to go ahead and talk about this uh, and get it out to you guys sooner than later. So let's talk about the team in terms of, as John so eloquently kind of framed it within the last one or two posts, um, it's a combination of a lot of individuals, right? People that are extremely serious about being on the team, one of the six people to go to regionals, and then a lot of individuals that want to be part of the process to really elevate uh, those six people and get them to where they are. With that, we have to understand that no matter what your aspect or what you see yourself is of the team, you're taking a leadership role. So let's talk about expectations of what that means um, at CrossFit Deliverance. Now, I know uh, there's some of you that might be like, how is me being on the regional team as seen as a leadership role? Well, you are, if you're not participating in classes um, and you are doing almost 100% of your programming outside of classes and during open gym, be it being the competitive programming or just your own thing, the perception is from normal clients that take classes 100% of the time that you are a advanced athlete. So therefore, because you are an advanced athlete, a lot of those members look up to you as is somebody that they aspire that they want to be or that they respect and therefore you are taking on a pseudo leadership role with that guys right at least that's what the perception is let's talk about expectations that I have for you guys um, and this is for everybody myself including coaches number one we're looking for virtuous movement virtuous movement is meaning that we're always trying to fight for the range of motion standards right Move, movement standards and making every rep that we do as proficient and efficient as possible in terms of what it's supposed to look like um, that goes also into the demonstrating the ability to be coached the coached coachability all it means is that are you do you have the ability and are you showing that you have the ability to take a cue take a suggestion from either a peer within the team or a coach implement it and then if it truly does make you better which most of the time they will that you're then trying to go ahead and hold on to that cue or go ahead and build upon it. Uh, when ooh, I see it happen more than enough that a lot of times cues are, are either half-heartedly taken or you know they're taken but then we forget them or so on and so forth and then there, there's, there's no, it's not sticking. It's not making a actual long-term difference. Um, and that has to change because when normal athletes see that then that is what's going to overflow in their ability to go ahead and actually respect a coach or a peer that knows what they're doing in, in a class. And their likelihood of taking that cue, running with it, and trying to go ahead and change their movement pattern for the better is eroded when they don't see people that they're looking up to and aspiring to be like not have the same actions. Another item is we need to make sure that we're creating an environment that is inclusive. So John's done a good job about making sure that all the posts that people feel like everybody's invited 
to the competitive item, which is why we're also making sure in the morning that there's gonna be, starting in June, that competitive class. So no matter if you're on the team page or not, right, you can be a part of the program. You guys are in the mix with everybody. And we wanna make sure within the team, everybody feels like this is a second home, right? That this is a place that you can have reprieve from work or home and depress and just be a positive force and place for you to refill that, that mental, emotional, physical cup. With that also, it goes into and ties hand in hand with the second place, second home, and John's last post on uh, the team page is we need to make sure when we're talking about other athletes or coaches that it is in a positive way. End of story, zero tolerance policy for that. If I hear any negative conversations about another coach or athlete, uh, I will publicly be calling you out and then and go ahead and reprimanding you for it. I expect you guys to treat and hold me to the same standard as well. If you hear me go ahead and slip up and talk about any athlete or coach in a negative way, I expect you to call me out and then reprimand you for it. As this is about making people feel welcomed, inclusive, and it's also a way that we can keep this a positive environment. As soon as that does not happen, it's giving a sense of, well, gosh, if we're talking about X athlete now, well then X, Y, and Z might be talking about me later and so forth. And we erode trust, respect. Um, we're no longer lifting people up. All we're doing is tearing people down for the sake of gossip or making ourselves feel better. We need to try to go ahead and drive um, satisfaction, right? Satisfaction um, and self-worth from something other than that. Um, that also means if you do have a legitimate negative um, item that you want to go ahead and talk to somebody about, about another athlete or coach, you're allowed to go ahead and pass it up to leadership, which means that's John, Danny's team captains, Peter, assistant coach, and myself as head coach. Those are the people that you're allowed to go and pass it to. And the environments and times when you're able to pass it on when it's just one-on-one -on -one between you and one of those four people. Four, no, three, four. Because if you go ahead and you want to talk about that negative uh, aspect about individual, it needs to be on a one-on-one -on -one situation, right? Um, then we can go ahead and handle it. And the expectation is if you talk to Danny or John or Peter, that they make sure they pass it along to me, even if they're uh, more than capable of handling it and they might end up handling it then, but I need to be in the know. Guys, this framework, these expectations are like it or not requirements of you being on the regional team and we'll be rolling out expectations for essentially normal gym members too. They'll be slightly different, but a lot of the things will be the same standards and we'll be holding people to the same standards. Amy and I opened the gym so we could be a positive environment and a positive force in people's lives, turning people around, and I've not enjoyed what I've seen over the last few months, right? How uh, certain items have grown. So with that, guys, I hope uh, that um, you guys have a good training day. Uh, and remember, be relentless in everything that you do and realize that, like it or not, you are a leader. We'll see you on the other side.